What's up guys, welcome back to the channel. If you're new around here, my name's Matt. I've been getting a ton of new subscribers lately, so if you're a new subscriber, thank you very much for hanging out with me. And uh, all my long-term guys, thanks for hanging in there and sticking around. As you can see, the truck, the truck yard here behind me out at the farm is getting a little bit out of hand. So I'm out here today to tinker on these things a little bit and try and get them a little bit closer to a point where I could get these things out of here because sitting out here collecting weeds ain't, uh, ain't very good. So, if you're new to the channel, this is a 1988 F700 with a 6.6 .6 liter Brazilian diesel in it. It was my former dump truck. I took the bed off of this truck, put it on my new International, and then I have this F600 parts truck that is a gas motor, and I was going to take this bed off and put it onto this truck now because it's a foot shorter than the bed that was previously on here. But it should bolt up perfect and be really easy just never got to that project this is my newest purchase this is a 1989 f800 with a crane on it and this truck if you haven't seen the previous videos the link to it up here i bought this thing at the auction uh didn't really want it but for the price it was going for i wasn't going to pass it up so threw my hat in the ring ended up walking home with it paid $700 after all the auction fees and a tow job to get it home here I'm rated about a thousand in it so that motor that's in there is a gas job it's like a 429 or a 370 uh, there's conflicting information here the grill says 370 I'll open up the hood there and show you the uh, intake says 429 at any rate it doesn't matter it's a boat anchor right now because it's locked up tighter than a drum so today we are gonna work on taking the heads off of that thing and seeing what the cylinders look like if i can get a motor into this thing for cheap i can probably sell this i'm thinking for around five grand so that's a decent little profit window it's worth the effort it's not very hard to swap a motor on one of these trucks Oh, and, and in case you're wondering why I back my pickup slap into this truck, it's because uh, it's awful hard to stand on the bumper and work on this thing. So I just back my truck up there and now I got a handy little work platform. All right, so one of my awesome commenters on the previous video of this truck said that a common problem with these, and it makes sense, was that the intake is directly below the uh, seam in the hood there and water would come down past that rubber gasket when it got bad puddle up on top of the intake and go down into the carburetor and obviously into the engine and lock her up tight these are the plugs lay in here the way it was when I picked it up and you can see this plug here hopefully you can see if it focuses this plug here is just plugged up with all kind of rust and junk so I don't know which cylinder this came out of I didn't pull the plugs they were just laying here but one of these cylinders in this engine is probably the culprit the rest of them all look fine, so I don't know. So I had a lot of comments. Apparently I made some confusion in the last video. Uh, there was a lot of people saying, well, spray oil in it and let it sit. I, I did that in the last video. Actually, I did that twice. I sprayed PB Blaster and all the cylinders, let it sit. Then I put a three-quarter inch breaker bar on this thing and gave it all I had, and she wouldn't even think about turning. No, no play at all. So... I know for a fact that she's locked up tight. Which side it is, I don't know. It's looking like this driver's side bank is going to be easier to get to. So I might just pull off that head on a gamble. We got a 50-50 shot at being right. And seeing what it looks like in there. You know, there's still a slight chance I could get this engine freed up and running. That'd be ideal. Um, I do also have in the F7 or F600 here, there is another... 385 engine family gas engine in there. I don't know which model it is, but anything would be better than the boat anchor that's in this truck. Problem is, that one's locked up too, although I don't suspect it's locked up as bad. I've never tried to free it up though, so I might also soak that one down and see if I can uh, bar it over today, or in the near future at least. So uh, yeah, let's get to this. Another recommendation a lot of people had was to uh, dump some diesel down our throat hole here and let it fill the cylinders all the way up. So, uh, yeah, that, that's worth a shot, and I'll try that. Oh, yeah, baby. Sweet. 
She loves this. So I had a ton of comments saying, oh, you could steal the 6.6 diesel out of this truck and put it into this truck, and then you'd have a diesel crane truck. And yeah, I was really hoping this truck had a diesel in it when I bought it, and I bought it sight unseen, so I didn't really even know. All it said on the website was inoperable. So anyway, I took a shot and lost, but beside the point, to swap a gas to a diesel is a lot more work than people think because if you take out this gas engine, say this gas engine has its power curve somewhere around 2,500 RPM, 2,000 RPM for argument's sake, then that's all the gearing behind it is geared to work with that speed of the engine. Whereas that diesel has its power curve around like 1,500 RPM, 1,800 RPM. There's a, there's a pretty big difference in the rotational speed of the engine at power. So that screws up your rear end gearing more than anything, but can also make your transmission a little less than ideal too. So not to mention there's a lot of other fitment issues. Uh, the cab on this truck is not cut out for with a dog box like the uh, F700 cab is because the diesel engine is longer. It's an inline six. Uh, the other issue would be just wiring and stuff. Diesel's pretty simple to hook up. You can pretty much just get away with just a few wires, but it's just more work that I don't need. Uh, so basically, I am going to probably just swap this for a gas if I can't get her going. So I come over here to the F600 parts truck, and I started pulling the plugs on it. And these are from the passenger side, and they actually they all look really good, really clean, like this thing would fire right up. I pulled them from the driver's side, <laughs> and uh, three out of four looked good, but cylinder was it, I think it was this guy. As soon as I pulled the plug out of there, water poured out, so. Uh, yeah, you know, it's not looking real good, but we'll go ahead and soak her down anyway and see what happens. Maybe it's not too bad. All right, I'm back out here a few days later on the old F800 crane truck here. Uh, you guys saw me soak this motor down with diesel put it right to her it was coming out the plug holes and uh, I let it sit for a week and I didn't bother to show you but I took the breaker bar again and put it on there and it's still not even thinking about budging so this whole girl's got to go so we'll go ahead and get this motor and transmission yanked out of here and uh, figure out what motor we're gonna put in it there we go <coughs> Now that whole piece should just sit on the truck there while I pull the truck out of the way. Now then, we've got a heck of a lot better access to our engine here. We can go ahead and start disconnecting everything, getting ready to yank this puppy out of here.
All right, last two, here we go. All right, it should, lie, it should uh, lift right out now. So also I noticed while I was taking things apart here that there is a return line from the compressor going into the side of the oil pan here. And a good chance the engine that I'm gonna pick up doesn't have that. So we'll probably have to switch to this oil pan. So I might as well just drain the oil now and uh, pop the filter off. That'll make it easier for clearance on this cross member when I pull the engine anyway. <laughs> you guys see the water coming out of that? Oh, that's like, never mind. That's the diesel I stuck in it the other day. Could be some water though. We'll see when it's done draining. Oh, look at the sludge. Oh, oh. she's a geyser. That is a nasty oil pan. Oh. This is one of my favorite oil drains of all time. That was beautiful. I love engineers too. They always got to put something in the way of the stream of the oil here. I don't know if this is in the shot right now, but the, the tie rod. The tie rod is just hitting right off that stream oil. Vice versa, you know what I mean? <laughs> what are the chances I can get this off by hand? Oh yeah! Whoever put this on here, props to you. I swear to God, some people put oil filters on like they're gonna fall off. Some sludgy stuff in there, not too, too bad. All right, the time has come to test the tensile strength of everything I forgot to disconnect. Let's get in there and yank this thing out. get enough height out of it to get it to slide forward because these connection bolts here so uh, we're gonna go ahead and pop these guys off real quick my stinking tools have been sitting out in the hot sun they're burning my hands I can't even hold on to them yeah mixed bag of nuts here a lot of stuff on this machine, on this truck is metric and a lot standard. This ratchet is on fire. Ow! Ah, I can't even touch it. And I'm too lazy to go get gloves.
try and pull her out of here without dropping it. Look at that, she's out. Now I didn't let all the pressure off of it. It is uh, still sitting here connected to the machine because I wanted you to see how sketchy it was, how it came out. I don't know what was holding it, but all of a sudden, boom, it sprung up. And when it did, the chain shifted off the forks and I had put this in there to keep the ch chain from sliding off the end of the forks. And that's, that's how she rode out of there because the way it was sitting, I couldn't set it back down and reposition the chain. I already had the weight of it, so I just just kept bringing it out. Uh, it's the only perk to working by yourself is you can't hurt anybody else. So I just brought it out here. Uh, we got her on the ground though. I don't think we tore anything up. Doesn't look like I broke the uh, bell housing any. So I believe we're in good shape. Alrighty, it is the next day. We got our boat anchor ripped out of this thing laying on the ground over here and I want to pull off the heads and see if we can see what is holding this engine up so tight so there's a lot of BS snaking around on the top here all the emissions control BS from the 90s none of this stuff's worth a darn anyway but uh, still try not to destroy it in the process in case I need to reuse it if I put a motor back in here it's probably just gonna be a stripped down just uh, make it run kind of thing so We'll go ahead and start ripping and tearing, see if we can't get the, this side tore off first, and then if we don't see any big problems over here, we'll go to the other side. Hopefully we don't see any big problems anywhere, and it's just stuck. Maybe I can uh, tap it with some blocks of wood and see if we can't get something happening. I don't know what the heck I'm thinking. You can tell I don't work on gas V8 engines too often. You gotta take this stinking intake off to even get the head off of the thing. I knew that, just wasn't thinking about it, so that changes the game plan up a bit. Stripping more crap off, let's go. Well, I should have waited until I cut the time lapse to start doing this and show you, but uh, I think I found which cylinder we have our issue on, and I think it's the exact same cylinder that the other truck with the other gasoline engine has on the same cylinder. So right here, this is our, I guess that's our intake. Yeah. No, exhaust valve. That's our exhaust valve. Stupid. And I think that this guy is locked up. See how I got that wiggle room right there? What I did, you take a soft hammer like a leather hammer like this, and you just lightly smack the top of the valves. And what that'll do is it'll push the valve down and it's on a spring, you know, you can watch it rebound and you can feel it. It'll spring right back. And see, I tapped all these and uh, the ones on this cylinder loosened up a bit. It's not springing back, so that valve is stuck right now. And if that thing were to run, it wouldn't be running on this cylinder because it would just be blowing everything straight out the exhaust port. Sometimes you can work them and they come back, but 
in this case, we're taking the head off anyway, so it doesn't much matter. So I'm betting that's the cylinder that's uh, holding us though, or one of them anyway, because if that valve's locked up, that means it had water in there most likely. So let's uh, finish yanking this head off and we'll go from there. Okay, our intake should be loose. Let's go ahead and see if we can pry it up off of here. Ugh. Ah, we have liftoff. Ah. <laughs> There's a heck of a dent there in our uh, valley cover. And uh, actually a hole through it. That maybe spells catastrophic failure underneath it here. Interesting. Hmm. You guys want to take bets? You think it's just a stuck engine or you think catastrophic failure? I'm getting pretty interested now. I really wasn't thinking catastrophic failure before, but now, now I'm thinking. Could be catastrophic failure. I don't know. That's a severe dent and breakage. Oh, it's behind door number one. It's, it's a new car. No, no carnage. The block's not busted or anything. I have no idea why the heck that thing's busted like that. See that? I don't. I don't get it. That's that's very strange. Very strange indeed. Well, let's go ahead and pull ahead. Go ahead, pull ahead. Ready? I'm excited. that terrible that valve that was stuck actually lifted itself back up out of there got a push rod in the dirt that's fine we'll just wash that off with some coolant and then some diesel fuel for some anti-rusting agent i know there's people out there that rebuild motors and they're like super super clean about everything that's not me uh sorry that's what you're looking for Okay, here it is. Here's our culprit. Let me get a rag, try and soak up some of this mess so I'm not just leaking it everywhere. So here's your problem right here. And it is exactly what I thought it was. It was rust that come down inside of the cylinder here. You can see that rust staining down the bottom there, on the bottom of the screen. That, uh, that's pretty heavily pitted and rusted all the way around the piston looks pretty heavily rusted and then the whole top side here you can see that's got pretty heavy pitted rust up on top there uh, not the worst I've seen by any means but uh, definitely definitely a showstopper for this engine uh, you could definitely rebuild this engine but I don't it's not worth it to me anyway uh, I'll probably slap this guy for sale and see if anybody bites it is a 429, but I, I keep getting conflicting information about the blocks, whether the 385 Lima engines are the same blocks in commercial trucks as they are in pickup trucks. So I can find 460s from a pickup truck all day long for reasonable prices. 
Um, and I'm sure things like the oil pan are different and maybe some of the accessory mounts and stuff. But if the block itself is the same, let me know down in the comments so I can pick up an engine here and get this project going. Because right now I, I keep looking on the internet and I keep finding conflicting answers as far as whether the blocks are the same from medium duty commercial trucks to pickup trucks. So I need another block exactly like this. This is a 385 series Lima engine, uh, preferably a 460. So if you got one and you're close by, or if you just know the information that I need to know as far as the blocks being the same, please let me know in the comments. Anyways, guys, that's enough of my railing. If you like the video, go ahead and give me a thumbs up. It really helps the channel out, and I appreciate that. I've had a ton of new subscribers lately, so I appreciate all you guys making this stuff happen. My channel's really been growing. I really appreciate that. It makes uh, There's a lot of hard work goes into this stuff, and not a lot of people realize. So uh, it makes me feel good knowing that I'm actually getting somewhere with this, and it's not just a pipe dream. So if you like big trucks, if you like cranes, if you like tearing down big blocks in the middle of the woods, Go ahead and hit the thumbs up button and I'll catch you on the next video. Thanks for watching guys. Later.